not just one, but I have two bad news. And yes, this is really the time where I don't like it, but there are two bad news and only one good news. But you really need to know all about this because this is all is happening in the world of tech and the open source. So get ready and stay updated. Hey there everyone, my name is Hitesh and I make a lot of coding videos, tutorials on the latest tech, but I also keep myself updated in what's happening in the community and I like to do same for you people. So in this video, I'll introduce you some of the things which are happening in the open source community. I would love to know your thoughts and feedbacks on that and I would also like to share one good thing which is happening in the community itself. So welcome on board. This is not a tutorial video where I share you about the Next.js or the Redux Toolkit because I've already done those courses. Uh, check out on my channel. They are pretty fantastic long videos. You will definitely enjoy that and I'm planning to make more. But this is something which you should really be aware of. So let me share my screen and share two things which are really bad and one good thing that is happening. Uh, so let me share the screen. So first thing that you'll notice is this news. Yeah, just accept everything. So this is the latest one. HashiCorp's license change is only the latest challenge to open source. In case you are not aware about this situation, so what happened, let me summarize this. HashiCorp is the company behind the Terraform. Terraform was totally an open source project. Don't get me wrong, it is still an open source project. But this change in licensing is such a nightmare to handle. Previously, it was completely open source. You can use it anyhow, whatever the means necessary, you can just use that. But now with the change of licensing, it is under a different license, which makes it, yes, it is still open source, but it is now source available product. Like the source is still available, but the way how you use it is totally different. A lot of people are saying this is a perfect and right way to move forward from the corporate perspective. A lot of people are saying this is killing the the rhythm and the enthusiast or the strategy behind the open source. So the whole soul is missing into that. Now, why is that? I'll walk you through it with that, but some brief points that I would like to share uh, with you on the on this one. Uh, so recently, in case you are not aware about that, uh, so there's a lot of buzzwords that is going on around here. So the latest example and a whole thing about the, this is switch of the software licenses. So it says rather than the Mozilla open source a Mozilla public license under which it has been available since 2014. Terraform is now available under the business source license, the BSL, which is considered as source available, not open source in a traditional sense. This is exactly what they are mentioning is as well. So why this sudden change? And again, we always need to think not from just one perspective, but actually from both perspective and figure out that which one is right, which one is wrong. So open source is not at all an easy task. Uh, how can I say that? Because I'm not just contributing in open source, I'm actually maintaining one. It is a full-time job. It, it takes a really take on to you. A lot of people come to your product and they just pick up your product. And a whole lot of companies actually use your product and sell it forward. So the original creators and maintainers of the entire project they are having, they have to live the hands and mouth. Nobody, there are not enough contributors. Uh, there is enough maintenance going on. A lot of people show you the hate and enough people don't support you monetarily so that you can survive in the long term. So you obviously have to come out for a business to so keep this open source completely livable. And this is a common problem with a lot of open source projects. Some people who are doing this open source just as a contribution in the community along with their full-time jobs or other revenue stream with the edtech or anyhow, they are actually easily maintaining these open source. But the people who are really enthusiastic and passionate about these projects, it's not an easy task to maintain. So what happened in the case of Terraform, they were maintaining it nicely and it is infrastructure as a code tool in which you just spec out your things which you need, how much RAM and how much space and all of these machines. And regardless of if you are on Google or the AWS cloud, wherever the cloud is, it just spins off the entire infrastructure for it. And it was totally open source and available and constantly being maintained by the community. But there were companies, in fact, there are companies like Google and uh, whatnot, uh, in fact, Amazon, they picked up this software, entire source code, and now they have built a product on top of it, which they are selling. So none of the portion is even going in the donation of that. How rude that is, if you think from the perspective of the company. If you think from the perspective of the open source soul or open source heart, it is absolutely wrong that you have built up entirely on the open source and now you are changing the license. So they are not still retracting the entire source code. It is still available, but a lot of companies are coming forward and are saying some things around it. You should also know about that. Uh, so there is also the companies like OpenTF. They're saying that HashiCorp 
uh, rivals threaten to fork the Terraform. So they are saying that I'll, I'll give a fork to this entire project. I'll again change the license of it and we will keep on updating them. Now, how long they will be going in that, that is something to take care of because it's not an easy job to maintain the open source. And as you can see, we are proud to announce that we have created a fork of the Terraform known as OpenTF. And here's the OpenTF announcement. We can go ahead and read that. You can star them. But again, how long they'll be taking forward? It's a full-time job. Uh, there is a GitHub repository as well. You can check that. I'm pretty sure they already got so much of the stars fork. Uh, so you can see they have 24.3. That is, man, too much. And, and the forks are there. So this fork obviously will get a lot of forks. And those forks will also get a lot of forks. But who will be maintaining onto the scale and level to HashiCorp has taken to this project that is worth watching. I'm not against anybody. I'm not with anybody. I just want to see where the situation will unfold itself. But it's a very interesting situation to watch out that how an open source project gains so much of popularity. A lot of companies build their entire product on top of that, earn millions of dollars to that while donating nothing to the open source original creators. And now some of these creators are taking it that, hey, we just want it to open source and giving it to the community. Who is right? Who is not? That's only the time is going to tell. Uh, there's more. Uh, Hashikov locks down the Terraform license. Uh, this is, again, a big shout out to Dax, uh, who actually did post it on Twitter. So a lot of people actually came forward and posted on Twitter. Uh, so it's it's a tra it's on track to be a part of uh, CNCF and has more resources allocated to than HashiCorp's version. There is a lot of drama. There is a lot of drama. So this is the part one. Now again, let me know in the comment section on which side you are. Should Amazon donate some part of these uh, products that they have built on top of that and should have contributed more? Or the HashiCorp should really change their licensing or the fork will be much more popular in the community and will be useful because just the popularity is not good enough. The project needs to be absolutely working and constantly being maintained and updated by the full-time developers. So will they have enough of the money to pay these developers? Because these developers also have to run their home. Uh, they have to bills to pay. So what will be the situation? So that's part one. Pretty interesting. Uh, by the way, these videos are very fun, raw. I don't edit them out. Uh, these are just updates. I, I just share them rawly, randomly on my channel. Another interesting thought, and again, AWS is again involved in this one. Uh, so, uh, another big thing is the fig. I was a fig user for a really long time. So, in case you don't know, fig is definitely the next generation command line. You might have seen me uh, using the fig uh, in some of my tutorial where people have asked that, how come your terminal is giving the entire folder as a suggestion? How that is coming? So, I was using fig in those uh, of the tutorials. I actually have used them. Uh, it was available for Mac only till the time I checked it. I stopped checking it after that, hey, are you available for Windows or something? So they were not. They were more centric and focused towards the Mac and probably now on the Linux as well. So you can see it's really good. It helps you to suggest the commands and pretty much whatnot. Uh, there are more products like this. So I actually loved this product. So it's pretty good. And I have used Hyper as well that they mention here. But hey, this one was pretty interesting. So I was using this quite a lot. Uh, secure, private, and whatnot. And what you will see that there are interesting things about this as well. What's interesting? Let me show you. Fig has joined Amazon. So Fig will be backed by Amazon. Uh, this is where the interesting thing comes up. So if you just click on this one, uh, this API link, this announcement. So it says, what's happening to the Fig product? First of all, they mentioned this, that, hey, uh, Fig and AWS share the passion. Yeah, of course. Why not? Yeah, you do share the passion. AWS believes that generative AI represent majority of technology. So basically, they bought the entire company and the entire uh, fig is getting acquired. I do have my experience what happens when things get acquired. Uh, I'll share that someday, <laughs> but there's a lot of things that happens. Uh, so what product will Amazon and fig be offering? There are no updates around it. But right now, uh, we are now making, oops, by the way, we are now making all the paid fig team features completely free, but only for the people who are already signed up. A new user will not be able to sign up for the fig product. So, hey, how come the new user won't be able to sign up for that? Ah, there's interesting. Thanks. This is where the interesting thing comes up. Uh, let me just scroll this. Uh, as always, we are incredibly thankful to the community for its continued support. Hey, thank you. Uh, with hundreds and thousands of users, okay, 22K GitHub stars, you get me, you got my uh, direction where I was trying to point you. 13K Discord member, that's okay, but 
400 open source contributors, five core products. Yep. So a lot of things were there, but now none of them is available. So pricing and everything is all gone. That, that's a different take, but entire thing which was on the GitHub? Hmm, interesting, interesting take. So this is my second take on first the licensing change. Now Amazon has acquired an entire team of such a great product which was about to uh, take the entire world with a strom, but probably they will be working with AWS. What will happen in the future? I do have experience of that, acquisitions and stuff. I am pretty sure there will be a lot of drama that will be happening, so we'll see how, how it will unfold. Uh, this is what happens when your first or second startup actually comes up and big companies comes to acquire you. But this is not all. There is actually a good news. Good news for all the people in the open source community who are trying to learn on their own. So self-learners or self-mentored learner, you can say, uh, there is a good news about them. So I also happen to run one of the open source project, which is available up here, recently started. Uh, this is known as... Uh, on the GitHub, we call it as API Hub, but it is actually available on uh, freeapi.app. You can just check it. There is nothing here. Just click here and you'll get to the project. That's where the majority of this is. Uh, we have a release note. We have a release note. So by the way, if you are here, uh, go ahead, give us some stars. At least make it above the thousand. I would really, really appreciate that. Please go ahead and do that. I would really, really appreciate that. We have a release note. So this is a fantastic project where we have designed a lot of backend so that you don't have to worry about the backend. You can just practice your front end part. Uh, just practice it in React, React Native, Flutter, Vue, Angular, whatever. Plain JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript, wherever you want to. Uh, we have added some more functionality. So we, what we have added is a real-time chat functionality. So we have integrated Socket.io. Entire backend for a chat application is being implemented. All you have to do is study the documentation of how that backend was built. And then based on that, design your own front end. It has a lot of features like how the chats are being enabled, one-to-one -one chats. You can send uh, any photos in the chat as well. You can create rooms as well where two, more than two people can actually join and uh, talk to each other, send messages and whatnot. And there's so much more that is going on there. Not only that, we have included, started to include some of the front end example and we are starting with the chat API. So yes, uh, not only the back end is being getting shipped, the front end of the chat app is also getting shipped. So you will learn that how the socket IO is not only being designed, but also how you can actually handle the socket IO in the front end part as well. And we have updated all this, uh, seedings and everything so that you have some data already there so that you can check it out. Uh, some good uh, shout outs as well, because there were some new contributors in this one. And there were also some uh, other contributors who have helped in this one. So uh, Balaji, a big shout out to you. Uh, he has actually contributed a really pretty nice uh, first uh, contribution, made their first contribution in the issue 19. Uh, a lot of you who really look, are looking forward to contribute their first time in the open source, this is probably one of the best way how you can do this one. And again, as you can see, there are a lot of people who are contributors. If you just uh, go on to the homepage or the free API, you can see these are the people who have contributed. So they don't need any introduction. Pretty nice. And, and again, the project entirely is maintained. A big shout out to uh, Shubham and Anirudh. A great, great hard work entirely done by them. And we are actually on to a great rocket start there. By the way, apart from this, if you check out the issues, you can also notice that we are requesting for some of the more enhancement that you can do. And this is how the contribution is done in the open source project, help wanted enhancement. So go check it out. This is probably one of the best way of getting started in open source. And eventually this is going to be one of the biggest open source project focused on learners. Uh, this is going to be a revolutionary thing eventually, uh, obviously uh, in the ed tech space, especially in the tech space, that anything that you want to learn how to handle the APIs, uh, you will start from absolutely scratch, absolute basics, and to the extreme level of production grade APIs that is possibly in this one. Again, entirely open source, entirely self-paced learning, go ahead and do whatever you like with that and our source code is available. So these are a few updates that I wanted to share with you. A lot of stuff is happening in the open source world and in the tech world in general. I regularly, constantly share these updates. So in case you are interested in those as well, do hit that subscribe button. And if you're interested in more on the tech code, uh, hands-on videos, I also do them. So hit that subscribe for that also. And stay tuned, I'm bringing in a more series that will help you to understand more about the code part. We'll catch you up in the next one. Till then, hit that subscribe and let's meet up in another video.